Welcome to the Badlands of Wyoming. This basin that you see before you contains hundreds of dinosaurs buried. And we are here to find them. This is my friend Doc. He's an early career paleontologist who runs the YouTube channel Dr. Dino. This whole trip is thanks to him. You see, last year Doc was working as a fossil preparator when he came across an old specimen from his university's collection. It was still in the original unopened plaster jacket from 1965 when it had been discovered by a previous paleontologist from the university. It had been sitting in the basement gathering dust for some 60 odd years. No one had properly studied or analyzed it until Doc broke open the plaster and realized that what was inside was a juvenile sauropod humerus bone. Long-necked sauropod dinosaurs are quite common, but younger juveniles are far more rare. Doc named this little teenage dinosaur Lentil and arranged this entire expedition to return to Wyoming and find the rest of Lentil's skeleton. So how exactly do you find a fossil hidden somewhere out here, buried in all of this? More than 99% of fossils remain buried and undiscovered, hidden away deep underground. The fossils that humans have been lucky enough to discover are usually the ones that have been eroded enough to become exposed at the surface where people can see them. It may sound old school, but even with today's technology, it's still the best way to find fossils. Our methodology is pretty simple. We walk through these channels here. You can see that water used to flow through. And we're walking along the base of these channels. We're looking for any bone fragments that we can find, identifying here on the bottom or on these slopes right here. And once we find a bone fragment, we see if we can find any up going up the slope or if we find any going further upstream, we can just pick up the trail as we go along until we see it coming from a certain area of the slope. And then we can go up the slope and try to find if there's a certain area where the bone is eroding out of. Like finding a trail of needles in a haystack. We keep trying to find it until we can track it back to its source. Just look at this. Usually down at the bottom of the channel, you might find one, maybe two, maybe three bone shards. But here, just look at it. The whole floor is carpeted. Bone, bone, bone. All of this is fossil bone. You see this corrugated pattern right here? That's very hallmark of bone, like our bony structures, but just permineralized. This was either a group of animals or a very, very large animal, all fragmented down into this. And so it looks like these were all deposited here by water flowing down from up at the top of these mounds. So if we are going to find actual bones sticking out of this mound, currently eroding and fragmenting to form all these fragments, we're gonna have to go uphill. We've climbed up onto this big hill over here and what we found on top of this hill is a scattering of bone from a very big animal here. We've got a real big kahuna over here, a real big bone. And Doc thinks that this is from a vertebra of a very big animal indeed. Most likely we have a sauropod vertebra here. That's largely what we're doing out here. Looking for a little spot of fossil bone fragment out of the corner of our eye and then tracking that up and seeing if we can pin it down to a source. The ground that I'm walking on right now is part of a rock sequence called the Morrison Formation. This rock was initially deposited here 150 million years ago during the Jurassic period. Back then, this area would have been a lush landscape of conifers, cycads, and ginkgo trees. Flowering plants like oaks, maples, and grasses had not even evolved yet. 
this was before the Rocky Mountains had formed. It would have been a much flatter landscape of forested river floodplains separated by prairies of ferns instead of grasses. And of course, populated with huge dinosaurs. The Morrison Formation is famous for being one of the richest dinosaur fossil bearing formations on the planet. Just take a look at this dinosaur fossil eroding out of the ground right next to me. This whole area is completely full of dinosaurs. In fact, some of the best known dinosaurs in the world were first discovered here in the Morrison. Dinosaurs like Stegosaurus, Brontosaurus, and Allosaurus all came from the Morrison. But nowadays, the Morrison Formation is mostly sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone, the remnants of that ancient river system. These conditions, though, are ideal for fossilizing large dinosaurs whose remains get washed into the rivers and covered in mud, sand, and silt. These layers turn into rock over the millions of years that precede, and more layers are deposited on top of them. However, due to a combination of erosion and the formation of the nearby Rocky Mountains, these Jurassic layers have been once again exposed to the surface. It's day three in the field, and we haven't found any large-scale skeletons yet, but we have found this very interesting site here. The bunch of these smaller scaled bones, these fossils that are highly rusted out here, very rusted and very small scale, these small fragments, not a whole lot of them localized to this area here at the top of the mound. And we also found our first tooth of the expedition. So it's a little fragmentary. You can see here, this could be the base. And it looks like this is right here uh, approaching the tip of the tooth. You see how it's kind of shiny there in the sunlight. Now this tooth is much too large to belong to these bones here. So it's looking like what we have right here is a small kill zone, an area where a larger predatory theropod, this could have been from an Allosaurus or a Ceratosaurus or something, uh, had dismembered its prey here and left only the bones behind and a, a couple shed teeth along the way. So that's our first find for the day. Pretty interesting, our first tooth, our first kill zone. Here we have an example of what one of these bone chunks is looking like. You can see it's recognizably bone. And every one of these light gray here is a chunk, a tiny little fraction of dinosaur bone. So we've tracked it up the slope a bit and we found the source. These bones are not coming from all the way up there. There's no bones up there. They're all coming from around this spot right here. You can even see some of them are still kind of eroding out of this cliff. Look right here. You see how they're in a line? right here coming out of the cliff. You see how you can still see bone fragments here partially covered up. Seems like there might be a lot more under the ground in this area right here. We've just made a potentially big discovery of a big animal here. You see this entire mound here? We were walking past when all of a sudden I noticed right here, sticking out of this little slope. All of these fragments of bone. This is a big bone coming out of here. Then I start looking around this rock. There's another bone sticking out of this big old rock mound here. And then on the other side of this rock, there's a third big old bone sticking out and eroding out of this little slope right here. So putting that all together, one, two, three big bones all coming out of this side. So Doc and I walked up and down this thing. We found a couple more bones sticking out the other end of this mound. And on top, there's a bunch of little bone fragments. Nothing sticking out so far, but a bunch of little bone fragments on top of this. So 
There is a behemoth, potentially, slumbering underneath of this mound. It could be sauropod, it might be multiple specimens. You could have Allosaurus or Stegosaurus. This could be a veritable dinosaur graveyard. We are going to have to report this find and see what potentially the professionals can dig up. So due to fossil protection laws in the U.S., Grayson and I could not do any excavating on our own. Instead, we have to report our finds to the U.S. Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. The BLM is an agency that oversees natural resources in the U.S., including fossils. In total, over the course of our expedition, we found at least a dozen sites that are of high priority to the BLM, meaning that they are multiple bones found eroding out of a single site. That indicates that there might be a skeleton hidden within the rock. So they want to get that excavated as soon as possible. In the next couple weeks, I will be escorting a BLM agent through our study area and showing them all the fossils we found. They'll decide which sites are the highest priority, and they'll have them excavated. So, thanks to all of your help, we may have saved some pretty important fossil finds in this area. So as you all have seen so far, Doc and I have found a lot of really compelling dinosaur sites worthy of future excavation and study. But I'm sure you're all wondering, what about lentil? That's what we came here for. Well, on our final day of the expedition, on day 11, Doc and I were walking through this area when we started to notice fossil bone fragments leading up this steep incline here. So we scurried up this incline and what we found on top, you can see, it looks like there's been an area that's been carved out of this hill for an excavation. Up on top of the hill, we noticed these little remnants of blue tarp. That means that this was definitely a dig site. And the best part is that the surrounding rocks here, the lithology, matches with what we were expecting for lentil. So now the only question remains, who was digging here and when? We learned from one of Doc's contacts, a local geologist, that Hope College in Michigan had conducted an expedition in the area some 20 years ago. And we managed to get in contact with the expedition team leader, who explained that they had indeed dug up a small sauropod specimen just south of our position. Upon further questioning, everything seemed to match with lentil. The size of their specimen, the surrounding rock types, even the presence of small micro fault lines in the bones themselves. But we had to be sure. We sent samples back to the lab for study and analysis. One from Lentil's humerus bone and one from the Hope College specimen, which is now at the Cincinnati Museum. We compared these two as well as a control group using energy dispersive x-ray spectroscopy, or EDS where a beam of electrons is fired at each sample, exciting it and causing it to emit X-ray frequencies which are read like a barcode to give an exact elemental fingerprint for each sample. If they match, then we have found the rest of Lentil's skeleton. Here are the results. As you can see, they are not a match. I was shocked. Qualitatively, everything seemed like a perfect fit with lentil. I was so sure that the EDS results were going to match, but they just didn't. Sometimes in science, you falsify your hypothesis and you have to go back and reformulate. Lentil is still out there somewhere. Even if we didn't find her on this expedition, I know Doc, and he will keep searching. In the coming weeks, a paleontologist from the BLM will survey the fossil sites that we did report, 
and hopefully an excavation will preserve some of the dozen or so specimens that we did actually find. A huge thank you to each and every one of you for viewing this far in the video. Thank you for your support and thank you to all of those who donated to make this expedition happen. And shout out to the channels who hosted fundraising streams like Erica from Gutsick Gibbon and Maya Atkinson's Bad Science Sunday. And to all my subscribers and channel members, this was truly the trip of a lifetime. Thank you so much for making it all possible. <laughs> I just want to say thank you, Dr. Dino. All the scientific discoveries are thanks to you. And thanks for having me come along. And I want to say to everyone watching, remember, stay learning and keep curious. Yeah. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs> <laughs>